improve our health, right? And so that's what we're going to be doing today. All right. So as uh, Barbara just stated, my name is Deborah Johnson and I am a community nutritionist. I myself, just to give you a little bit of history, I myself am a plant-based eater. So I've been eating uh, plant-based, which basically means I eat whole foods plant-based. And I've been doing that now for six years. It's funny because I had a reminder on my Facebook pop up and I was like, oh, I remember <laughs> right around that time. Right. Um, and so I've been enjoying eating plant-based. And one of the main things that I've I've noticed is that, you know, eating plant-based, you really do have to hone in on your spices. You have to hone in on your herbs and things like that, because, you know, we're not as plant-based eaters. We don't get to eat some of the things uh, that we generally eat, i.e. chicken, fish, and so forth. So I still use, and I brought it here. I think I brought it up. I still use, and I use a lot, my turmeric right? So this is one of the main spices that I love to use. We'll talk about that today, a little bit about it. I absolutely love using cumin in my food as well. And those are some of the spices that are bringing in a lot of the, um, a lot of the flavor, right? Things like oregano, right? And so it's really a great idea to incorporate them, not just because of the health benefits, but obviously because of the flavor that they're going to add to the food. So when you're eating, uh, you know, vegetables, predominantly vegetables, you want to spice it up, although you don't really need to, because for me specifically, I absolutely love the taste of just some um, grilled uh, eggplant or some uh, roasted cauliflower, carrots that are just put in the oven. They taste so delicious, but I will say putting a little bit of spice sometimes do ramp up the flavor. Herbs and spice do ramp up the flavor. All right. So um, so that's one of the reasons why I actually got really excited about herbs and spices was because as a plant-based eater, you really kind of have to incorporate a lot of that stuff um, just so you, you don't feel like you're missing out too much. All right. Um, so we're talking today, as I said before, let's talk first about herbs. And I have a question there for you. So I'm going to let you think about that while I read what's written here. So herbs are the leafy green part of plants. And they are plants with fragrance or aromatic, sorry, <laughs> aromatic properties, right? Herbs can be used to flavor food included in fragrances and even as a part of the natural medicines um, that we find, right? Then uh, here are just a few, right? Basil, parsley, rosemary, thyme, and dill are all herbs. So these are just some of the examples of some types of herbs. And as you could see in the little garden box there, you also have chives. Um, so there are many different types. And I'm gonna just show you a list of the types that I was able to find. We're not gonna talk about all of them, that's for sure. I handpicked just a few that we'll focus on today, all right? But I do wanna know from you all that's hanging out with me here this afternoon, what is your favorite herb? And I would love to know why. All right, so I'm going to invite you at this time to unmute yourselves and let me know what is uh, your favorite. And it could be just the herb that you find yourself, um, you know, using a lot, right? So what is your favorite herb? And please share why as well. I'm going to just stop sharing my screen for a second so I can see everybody's faces. If you want to, um, for those of you who are not on camera, to come on. Would be great. If not, that's fine too. Hi, hi, Roberta. <laughs> Glad I got on. It took me an it took effort. <laughs> it's good to see you. I love your haircut. Is that a haircut? It's it's hair on and it was <laughs> I love it. It you does look beautiful. It to. It's the humidity. It just goes crazy. <laughs> you look beautiful. I understand. <laughs> 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 right so who would like to go first and share with me their favorite herb um why don't I go first seeing as I'm asking you all to do that I'm gonna go first all right so my favorite and I'll tell you why as well my favorite herb is thyme and I love it because it's um one of the herbs that I was using when I was a little girl and so my parents would put it in practically everything, all the brown stew chicken. And when I used to eat all that brown stew chicken and oxtails and uh, all the stews, it seemed to take the flavor to another level. 
And also even in rice and beans, we make rice and beans. Well, we call it rice and peas in, in my, where I'm from in Jamaica. And, um, and now when I do use it to brown stew my mushroom, I love it. I love the flavor that it, it brings in. And also I still use it in my rice and peas because I still eat that. <laughs> but that's why I like thyme. It really connects me back to my, my, my roots. So who wants to go next? All right, Roberta. <laughs> it's very hard to actually pick one because okay. there's several that I really like, but I'm going to pick one that I don't use a lot. And, and when I ever, I use it, I just love it. And that's dill. Oh, yes. If you take right. dill, just like basil, you take yeah. it, the fresh, and you smell it. It just like, it does something to the whole body. Just the aroma is so wonderful. So and true. it changes things. I remember several years ago when somebody asked me my recipe. No, I asked somebody for their recipe for chicken soup. Yeah. And uh, they said, and they give me all the ingredients. And then they say, and dill. I said, dill. <laughs> and I said, that's so strange because I always use parsley. So the mm. next time I was going to do it, I tried it with dill. And oh my gosh, it was like amazing. Mm -hmm. So when you change up and you substitute, you find all kinds of wonderful creations. I love that. That's that's so true. And that's one of the challenges because we're talking a lot about plant-based eating and um, folks transitioning or just trying out more plant-based foods. And you made a really great point. Substituting and you know swapping out certain things, you'd be surprised what you discover because that same deal, I did it with a um, just some vinegar uh, and I mean, oh my gosh, just with some cucumbers and dill, I poured that over my, cuc my cucumbers. <laughs> it was so delicious. So I discovered it that way. Um, but I, I thank you for sharing, uh, Roberta. And that, that's a great story. I like that about the chicken soup. <laughs> so, um, flat, it says I pair with the vegetable example, potatoes with, with dill. Oh, that's nice. Very so nice. I think that means you use mostly dill. <laughs> okay. Is that Mary? That's Susan. Oh, Susan. Okay. So Mary, no, Mary had said that about the dill. Oh, about the potatoes. So, yeah, yeah. You know what I just recently I discovered, and I never yes. came up with it, but it's rosemary. I oh. just I've come to love the the, the yeah. fragrance, and yeah. I love it in you know potatoes and all sorts of vegetables and you know I I find rosemary really has you know and I and it keeps forever you can dry it that's and, true uh, you know I'll just stick it in my refrigerator and it dries and it lasts for months yeah no I love that another trick you can do if you really want to keep it for a long time is you get those cubes that you use for ice cubes and you can uh, put a little olive oil in there and put it so any herbs actually that's a tip I was going to give today so I'll just give it now I'll as Barbara just mentioned putting it in the refrigerator just getting like an ice cube and if you're gonna use it for um you know like you're sauteing it or whatever what have you you could put some olive oil or just water and just put it in the freezer and you can take it back out and use it at a later date so that's one great way of actually keeping your herbs for a long time all right because I know sometimes they go bad and we don't want that because it's a waste of money, <laughs> but also I hate to see food going down the way, you know, down the drain. So um, that's one way to, to store it. Um, who I else would like to, to share? I want Sorry, to thank you for that because so often I'll buy something like dill and it's beautiful and it's a bunch and I use part of it and mm. I'm trying to rack my brain. What else can I use it for? What I else know. Can I for right now. And now I don't have to use it right now. I can substitute it later on. I can put it in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Um, I didn't tell you all before I was telling Barbara before I came on. Usually I don't wear hats to my workshops, but <laughs> I was picking up my son from college. Um, he did an orientation. So that's why I'm wearing a hat. Hopefully you could see my face clearly. <laughs> what does it say on the top of the hat? Is it the name? Oh, it's of just college? my, yeah, it's just my company. Oh, it's not. <laughs> oh no, that's just, it's just my temple wellness. <laughs> Anyway, um, so who else would like to share <laughs> about their herbs? Any herbs that you like? Or just put it in the chat. You don't have to say why. You can just tell us. Yeah, I'll share. I, I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm, a, I'm a big time user. 
Oh. Um, and everything. It goes on every salad. In fact, I picked some from my sister's got a yard that's uh, full of thyme. And I picked some and try to plant it here and it didn't grow. And it grows like wildfire oh. everywhere. But I can't get it in the pot. But so it's drying by itself. And I oh. use it on everything. I use it on everything. And oh, basil, uh, ba I use a lot of basil, yeah. um, but not nearly as much as the thyme. And sometimes I just sprinkle it on because I like the greenish color or the greenish brownish color and mm -hmm. it just um cheers up a salad which That's I right. yeah cheers it up I love that uh, something else I just want to put in you know that song um sage rosemary and thyme yep. and you put those three together everything parsley. Together. you left out parsley, really? parsley That's not part of the song <laughs> <laughs> Bossy sage, rosemary, and is it, is it in there? Yes, okay. it is. Oh, well, oh my goodness, I gotta re-listen. Re <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get it. Parsley, rosemary, and thyme. Did I get it? Sage. <laughs> sage. sage. Oh, I forgot the sage. How could you forget the sage? That sounds like it would be good in, a, in like a stew or what have you, right? Like some type of stew. Yep. Love it. I love it. Thank you all for sharing. Um, anyone else want to share before we continue? All right, so it's an invitation. We don't all have to, um, but I appreciate. Oh, Simon and Garfunkel song. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up when we get off, okay? So I can <laughs> I can use that um, in whatever it is that I'm preparing. I'll try it and see if it works. All right, so let's get back to it. Thank you all. Um, all right, so let's keep going here. All right, so we just talked about the herbs. Now let's talk a little bit about um, the next one. So spices, right? What are spices? Let me just hide this. All right, so spices can come from the berries, the roots, bark, fruits, or even seeds. Spices have been valued and traded for thousands of years. And as a result, spices have made their way into cuisines all around the world, which I think is really great. Um, what would Mexican dishes would be, would, what would a Mexican dish be without chili powder or Indian cuisine without the aromatic spice blends of gram masala and curry? Spices are essential to dessert as well. Holiday baking would not be the same without the smell of cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. So I'm going to unshare again, and I would love to hear your favorite spice and why. And I'm going to share again first. So my favorite happens to be on that list and it's nutmeg. And I love nutmeg. Again, a lot of my childhood memories seem to kind of come back and just, just, just follow me through life. <laughs> and so the connection between nutmeg is my mom, and I actually love cinnamon too. My mom um, taught me how to make this sweet potato pudding um, recipe that I made. I think I did it on Bronx Eats. Mm -hmm. And those are the two, yeah, those are two of the spices that go in there. And I actually end up using some of that in tea. And now, believe it or not, my 18 year old has been, he's been using it in his tea now for a while. So I'll go down and my spice draw is a mess because he doesn't cover the top properly and there's cinnamon everywhere. <laughs> so I'm like, what are you doing? So then I'm like, it's a great excuse. I'm like, clean up my cinnamon draw, clean up my, my spice draw because there's cinnamon everywhere. But I love cinnamon and I really love um, nutmeg and that it's really the connection to my childhood. So, so uh, Mary says here, cinnamon, which is great in coffee. Ooh, I've, never so I've done that in coffee. Oh, okay. All right, I'll have to try that. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but next time I'm definitely gonna put a little dash and see how it how it goes. I oh. always put it on top of a cappuccino on oh, top okay. of. The nice. I like cinnamon. Cinnamon is one one that's very high on my list okay. as well, and I like turmeric. Lately, I've taken it to using mm -hmm. turmeric on yogurt and and such turmeric with pepper. Huh. On uh, yogurt, and cinnamon and cinnamon with Greek oh. yogurt and fruit makes a nice breakfast. Okay, I've never had turmeric in like a dessert form like that. May have to try it. <laughs> Doesn't turmeric have uh, a quality to, I think it raises blood pressure or something? Does if you have like too much of it. Well, what's too much? Well, it's, I think a quarter, a quarter of a spoon 
is sort of like per person. But if you're cooking, right, you're using like, let's say a tablespoon and you're cooking for maybe more than one. So if you're using um, like a tablespoon and you're cooking for four to six people, then that would be fine, for example, right? So I wouldn't put like, if people are making like a turmeric tea, for example, I wouldn't use more than quarter of a spoon. Thank you. And that might be in my PowerPoint. I'm not sure if I added that, but we're going to talk about cumin. That's one of the, not cumin, um, turmeric. I think that might be in my PowerPoint. Hopefully it is, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's one, something. That cool. One of the things I have done is sometimes I'll see something, um, be it in the frozen food area or prepackaged, whatever. And I'll look at the ingredients and I'm not buying the product, but I want to see what are the spices and things that are put in there. Yeah. So when I go home and I make it myself from scratch, I'll throw <laughs> in those spices and say, yeah, it really adds. There was a time I was at the time I was uh, preparing uh, food. The pot was ready. Everything was in it. Now all I had to do was throw in the spices. Total blackout. The whole <laughs> The whole city went into a blackout. This is a long time ago. Oh. And it's a different country. But the, oh. there was a complete blackout. I'm looking around, scrounging around, no flashlight available, no candles, no anything. But I had to get those spices in. <laughs> so I opened up the cabinet, which was right above my head. And I just started taking things down and just like a little of this, a little of that, oh. whatever it was. And I hoped for the best. And then after about an hour, it continued cooking. After about an hour, the lights came on and I served the dinner and everybody was ooing and eyeing and saying, I said to them, enjoy it. You'll never get it again. Because <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> I have no idea what I put in, but boy, was that delicious. Oh my maybe God. We should, maybe we should actually consider doing that doing it with our eyes closed, you know, That's just so true. <laughs> well, just you know picking like, doing. say, okay, five, I'm going to use five spices <laughs> and I'm just going to blindly, but I'd be tempted to smell. I'm a smeller, right. you know, I'd be like, Hmm, you know, like this, I just smelled this. Oh, it's so potent. It, this is turmeric. It's super potent. Now something like cardamom, I might not be able to pick up. I don't use it that often but it does have a distinct smell. So we do have to smell our herbs and spices too, because I'm making a mess here. And make sure um, you know it's familiar. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Maybe you could have done that when you were cooking that time. You could have just smelled, you know, done it based on smell. If I had only thought. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it turned out good. That's all that matters. <laughs> um, anyone else want to share? Mary said she uses turmeric and her tofu scramble. Yes. Me too. Yeah. Me too, Mary. That's a really good one. I did that just the other day and it gives it uh, sort of like an egg. So if you're thinking like you miss egg, right? And I didn't bring it up, but if you guys want, I can share it with you. If you want to do a tofu scramble that mimics egg, there's a particular salt. Um, Barbara, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but I'll share it. And it has like an actual egg flavor. The salt has an egg flavor? Yeah. yeah. I have to share it with you all. I'm going to find it maybe before we leave and let you know, I, I pity I didn't bring it up because I wasn't thinking about that, but um, yeah, it has an egg flavor. So when you're doing your tofu scramble, throw that on and you're going to get that eggy sort of flavor. It's an Indian spice. Yeah. I'll find Indian salt. I'll definitely find it. And I'll share it with you all. Um, anyone else want to share about what kind of spice they like? And then we're going to run on after you can put it in the chat as well. No? All right, that's fine. Okay, let's jump back in. So now we're gonna get some, um, I'll share about each, um, let's get back into our PowerPoint here. All right, thank you for participating and for sharing. All right, so listen, there are a lot, there's a long list of herbs and spices. I, we're not gonna touch on any of these, but I did wanna just kind of pull them up and share because there are over two to 300 different types of, I want to say plants that we can actually utilize, but some of these are the common ones. So I'm just going to leave this up for a few. I'll just pick on some of the common ones, but if there's any here that you see that you're familiar with, like for, for example, for me, I am not familiar with Sicily. I don't know if any, anybody is, but I'm not familiar with that one. Look just to see if there's any that you're not familiar with. 
And if you're familiar with all of these, kudos to you. <laughs> what is Angelica? It sounds you, wonderful. I mean, beats me. That's what, that's what. <laughs> I think Angelica, I know it's supposed to be a great herb for uh, women, for different oh. ailments, but I think it has sort of, sort of a, a, like a licorice type flavor to it. I haven't used it, but that's what I understand about it. Okay. And how do you say the next one? Anise? Anise. Anise. I think it's anise, that's right? The, that's like, that's like peppermint. And no, no, that's like licorice. Isn't that's licorice. also licorice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never heard of bergamot. Bergamot is sort of an orangey scent. I know that I haven't tried, but I have the, the essential oil. Asafoetida. I've never heard of. Me neither. <laughs> Never heard of that one. <laughs> I wonder where that comes from. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because when I was putting this together, I thought to myself, there are some of these that I would love to kind of do some, you know, dig into a little bit and just get to know. But I, I focused more on the ones that we're familiar with because I'm not even sure that we can find some of these, right? Like the, however you pronounce that one, Asafoetida. <laughs> I'm not even sure where you could find that. So I didn't want to highlight those, but I did want to share that there are so many different types and this is in alphabetical order, right? So I'm going to keep going and you're going to get to see, what did I do just now? Oh, I clicked on something and it took me out of here. Hang on. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. I clicked on um, black pepper and it took me all the way out. Let's not do that. Let's get back to this. All right. Is there a way of finding out if, uh, like I'm allergic to mint. And mm -hmm. so the question that I have is, are there other herbs or spices that are in the same family that I should stay away from? Well, that's, that's a tricky question. Um, what I generally tell people is that you need to get tested. <laughs> you know, I recommend that. Like if they've told you, if you've gone to an allergist and they've told you that you are allergic to mint, I would certainly obviously stay away from mint, but they can also let you know within that scene, if you go to an allergist, they should be able to tell you Whatever. How, quite possibly within that same family, because I've been tested more than once because <laughs> I'm allergic to a few things. So I've gone there and they've, they've told me like, okay, you're allergic to this and, and this and this and this. So you could certainly ask them that question and see a real good allergist should be able to tell you that maybe within that family, you're, you may be allergic to these other. And they will probably say may be allergic because until you're tested specifically for that particular thing, they tend to not say that you are allergic. So that's a tricky question. It's hard to say. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to say. Well, I know with certain vegetables, you know, like the nightshades and that kind of thing, they have mm -hmm. specifics. That's why I was just wondering. Okay. No, it's a great question. It's a really great question. But, you know, when it comes to allergies, it's best to get your doctor's sort of, you know, feedback. Okay. Um, here goes some more. So we have clove. I'm familiar with that. I love clove, coriander. Um, feel free to shout any out that you're not familiar with. Coast Mary, never heard of it. Anybody's heard of Coast Mary? No. No. Yeah. See, lots of them. Grain of paradise. Sounds really good. Never heard of it either. But we're familiar with, I think most of these seem, and filet, sassafras. Okay, sassafras I'm familiar with. Um, it's something that I remember from my childhood. They used to call it sassafras. I don't know it by the name file or filet, um, but I'm familiar with that. It's sort of like a grass that you would boil and use for tea. At least we did. Um, I'm going to go on to the next one. I'm just going to slide through these quickly. So any comments on any of these? What's a great paradise? That was on the prior slide. The great paradise, I beats me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the list of like, you know, the ones that I, I, some of them I thought we would know majority of them. But yeah, it, when, you, when you look at the list, you realize that you do, mo do know most, but there are gonna be sort of like a handful, like the grains of paradise. Um, but I do encourage us to look them up, you know, when we get off, right? I didn't get a chance to do the research on all of them, but I certainly will be looking these up. Um, and if you do want the PowerPoint, Barbara, I can share the PowerPoint with you and you can forward it to the group if you like. Oh, it um, says related to ginger. 
Oh, no. Interesting. Yeah. What about Coast Mary? Did you look that one up? I don't want to have you working on that now, but. All right, um, keep going and I'll let you know when I get it. All right, cool. <laughs> so Coast Mary, we'll get that from Barbara in a second. All right, so um, let's go to the next one. Any questions on any of these? Marjoram, I always find that in my Herb de Provence, I always see it in the as one of the herbs. So if you've ever used Herb de Provence, it's basically just a medley of, of um, herbs and people put different things in theirs, but this is always one that I see in there. I've never used it by itself. So I don't Marjoram, know if anybody... is that the one you're referring to? Marjoram? Yeah. I've, I've used never... that. It's, uh, I actually have a, uh, a butternut squash soup recipe mm. that without that ingredient is just soup. With it, it's mm. like hops. Wow. So you purchase it all by itself, not mixed in with a medley. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I said to myself, if I don't like the soup recipe, what am I going to do with this? And it was not cheap. And so I said, you know what, let me give it a shot. What's the big deal? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. Um, and I think I've also seen it used for lamb recipes, the marjoram. Okay. Okay, so it may be potent, right? It may be a strong. It I is. think I have it in the house, but as whoever it was that was speaking said, uh, I haven't used it. And so I'm sure it probably tastes like nothing at this point. It's been there <laughs> for a very long time in my closet. Maybe it's been perfect. Who knows? I know. yeah. <laughs> Some of them <laughs> last years. <laughs> so it would be interesting to have a listing of all of these spices, but what kinds of foods they go well with. Yeah. So take, take a look at something and we could share what kind of recipes we may use with a particular spice. But mm -hmm. if I were at home and I was saying, okay, I have this spice and what would it go? Would it go well with fish? Would it go well with this vegetable? Or would it go well mixed with a particular? Because sometimes spices don't mix well with each other. That's true. Well, you could do the blind cooking. <laughs> you know, just grab a spice and put a little in and see how it works. I right. think everybody's going to do that, Susan. We're going to all get off tonight and say, you know what? I'm going to do what Roberta did. Let's do a little blind cooking. <laughs> My husband is very particular about his food. I might get a divorce, so I might not do it. <laughs> Don't risk it. Don't risk it. Don't He's going to be like, what it is? He's very honest. He'll tell me. <laughs> like, blame Roberta. <laughs> anyway, let's run on here. So um, some more. I'm not going to stay too long on this because I want to get into the few that I wanted to share about. Uh, vanilla wasabi I actually learned that wasabi was an actual spice I was not aware of that I just kind of always saw it on you know the menus um white mustard vanilla of course I know most of us are familiar turmeric which we've been talking about um thyme which we talked about tarragon so most of this I think most of us might be familiar with star anise is probably the only one I'll say that I'm not familiar with um so yeah that's that's that any comments about this before I move on I know anise and I know star fruit, but they don't go together, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Barbara, did you find it about the other one before I go on? What oh, was Cosmary. Let's yeah. see. Um, let's see. And it tells you what it's. Let's. Uh, you keep get keep going, and uh, let's see. All right, no problem. I, I, it, I have it's very noisy in here, so I can't really keep my mic on. And so okay. I picked up in the chat. And one of the things I wanted to know was, does mace taste like nutmeg? The other thing I wanted to know, what is the difference between sorrel and hibiscus plant? Okay, so the mace, I am not familiar with mace. Do you mind um, elaborating a little bit about what mace is? Because I've never heard of mace before. I've heard of it. And um, I, I thought it was similar to nutmeg, but I, I don't really know. I thought okay. it's something you spray at an, at an attacker. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta. <laughs> okay, so I did a little research real quick on my phone. So I'll just read it for you. It's a yellowish brown spice, mace. Uh, and it's derived from dried lacy coating of the nutmeg seed. 
So it's derived from it. Okay. They use so it, it a lot in baking. Because I, okay. I see it and I have some at home, not that I do that much baking, but I've used it. Okay, okay. So it, it, yeah. sounds, it sounds like, you know, uh, coriander and uh, cilantro, they're all from that same family. One is like the leaves of the plant and then it's, you know, the seed yeah. or something like that. Right. Okay. So it sounds like it's about the same. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. It says that um, substitute the maize called for in your recipe with an equal amount of nutmeg. So it sounds like you can actually substitute it because it has a similar flavor um, as nutmeg is what it sounds like. So you're, you're right about that. All right. Okay. Thank you for that question. And then sorrel and hibiscus... According to me, <laughs> um, it's the same thing because for me, just, and I mean, I'll, I'll research and give you the proper answer, but um, growing up, we had in the Caribbean, we had sorrel and sorrel is basically what here in the States, they refer to as hibiscus. So, but I know that maybe the terminologies, um, because on one of the, let's just go back real quick. Um, I did have um, sorrel, but they call it rumix spices. So I'm not sure if that's the same thing, but I know sorrel and hibiscus to be the same thing. Right. Um, and it's red. I don't know. If, are you referring to that red plant? Yes. Mary? Yes. Yes. I, I use the hibiscus for tea. Okay. Yes. It's great for tea as well. So we use it to make um, a special drink at Christmas time in the, in the holidays. Um, in the Caribbean, it's, um, and you can find it at most Jamaican restaurants, actually, you could find um, the sorrel. They also call it rosella. So that's another name I've heard for it. The, I think, I don't know if that's a scientific name for it, or what have you, but here it says rumex spices. So I'm not sure if it's the same exact one. So a little bit for me. On the, yeah, go ahead, jump in. I, I found in my... <laughs> In the back of my spice closet where I had the ones I never used but had for years. In fact, don't know that I don't use them and bought seconds of marjoram. Oh, let me stop sharing. I want to see. <laughs> and oh. on the back of these tins, I also have bottles of both of them of, of the marjoram because I didn't realize I had the tin. But on the backs, they tell you what they use for. So if wow. you like, I'll give you a quick. I'll give you a yes, quick. Yes, go ahead. This is a community amazing, circle, so please share. Food used on cookies and cakes, sweet rolls, pastry, puddings of all kinds, chocolate pie, chocolate milk, used in preparing pork, veal, poultry, sauces, mm -hmm. soup, salad, everything, basically. That's mace. Never used it. Um, <laughs> and the marjoram is used for Italian dishes, tomato soup, vegetable soup, clam chowder, preparing mm -hmm. beef, pork, veal, lamb, game, poultry, fish, shellfish, Croutons, waffles, pastry, stewed oh tomatoes, broiled tomatoes, green wow. beans. <laughs> it blends well with other herbs. So there you have it. I think I'll pull these forward and see if they still have any flavor. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I love I, that. This is <laughs> very good sign, Susan. Oh yeah, my no, God. There's no telling what else could be ginger. Listen. Up on the back of that closet. <laughs> well, I think, you know, if you have it old, you just use extra. That's yeah, right. So it's not going to hurt you. You just use a little oh, more than it calls for. Actually, that's so true because it's not as potent, right? That's right. what it is. You're right. an expert at this, Barbara. Feel free to chime in at any time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, that's excellent. Good to know. I had to, I wanted to see that. So that's why I stopped sharing. But let me go back to sharing. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's, What's that here? <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Mary Platt says uh, star anise is used in Chinese dishes and mace. Oh, there you go. Mace is the outer covering. She already got there before we we found it. So sorry, sorry, I just didn't see the. Uh, oh, she commented. She commented already. So. Oh definitely. man! All right, that's okay. Is, yeah. Yeah, we appreciate it. All right, let me keep going here. I have a few more slides to go, so I want to try to get through as much as I can. Um, today. So these are the herbs that I decided and spices that I decided to just handpick. I honestly was just like, all right, which ones? And I just chose, you know, some of the few that I figured would be good for us to just talk about. So cinnamon, turmeric, cumin, rosemary, thyme, basil. And I think we actually touched on most of these already. So what I'm going to 
I'm sorry, the previous slide, the previous slide yeah. was not related, like rosemary, thyme, basil, that's not related to the picture because that's not corresponding. It's just that you're putting it in and you're showing spices, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are just pictures of spices and, and okay. herbs. Yeah, any picture I just grabbed from the application I use. I chose the one with thyme, but this is sage. This is dill, yeah. Yeah. right? So we have, and over here, it's just a whole bunch of other things, right? <laughs> So yeah, it's just um, a depiction, but the actual photo you'll see like this one, this is rosemary. Right. All right. So it's an aromatic herb that is used in flavoring of many dishes, um, such as soups, casseroles, salads, and stews. And I'll give you guys a really quick recipe that I used to make for my family before. And even now when my family comes over, they still eat fish. Um, so I'll make this and my mom absolutely loves it. It's a very simple recipe. If you love um, bronzino fish or bronzini, you take the whole fish, take the head off if you like, but take the fish, you stuff it with the rosemary, lots of garlic and a tiny piece of butter. You can put it in foil or not, just put it in a pan and you bake that. That rosemary is going to give that fish so much life. All right. So if you're looking to try a, a fish recipe, um, that's very easy. That's very simple. You put that in the oven and roast it. You could also use olive oil if you don't want to use butter um, and just roast it for about 30 minutes, not even 20 minutes. And it's good. Wrapping it in foil keeps all the, um, the, uh, the moisture there. All right. Thank you. So that's, that's a recipe. Yeah. Try that and let me know if you do try it and if you like it. So rosemary has a long history of both culinary and medicinal uses. And majority of these um, herbs and spices that we're talking about will have uh, a long history of that for the most part. It grows in bushes um, with wood-like stems and it's short. It also has that pine-like needles um, and it resembles pine actually. So if you're looking at it, you can see it has similar, the, the scent of pine it's, it's slightly similar, right? But we know that this is rosemary and it's different, all right? You know, it's very pretty is if you're making a dish yeah, and you want to have it more three-dimensional instead uh -huh. of just having it flat on the plate, you mound it up and you take a, a sprig of the rosemary and stick it in the middle and okay. then it becomes, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Even oh, if it doesn't that. taste good, it'll look beautiful. Yeah, it gives it sort of like a tree, like standing in the middle of that dish, right? Very nice. I like that. Something to try. I'll use it because I do have lots of rosemary. I'm actually growing some in my back now. Um, so I keep that. That's one of the ones that I always have on hand. Um, so when it comes to having it fresh or dry, because rosemary has a low moisture content, even when fresh, it retains its flavor after drying. And I think Barbara was saying that earlier that you can have it um, for a long time because you can actually keep, uh, it keeps the, the same flavor is still there. All right, so in terms of taste, it has um, herbs like thyme, sage, ma what that word there, <laughs> marjoram, savory, and tagarine can be substituted for rosemary. So here's a great option if you're thinking of substituting. Um, and I think we might've touched on that thyme can be used as a great substitute. So those are some of the substitutes there. When we're cooking with it, it's uh, most often used to season meats, right? I just gave you a great recipe with the fish. Chopped rosemary can be added to breads or even biscuit dough. Uh, and the flavor will infuse throughout, uh, throughout uh, and during cooking, right? So you can put it in early basically is what it's saying. Potatoes, which we've talked about, beans, lentils, and it also pairs well with, um, uh, lentils also pair well, sorry, with rosemary. Rosemary can be quite potent and is therefore usually used sparingly, all right? So it's one of those things that, you know, um, use as much as you like, but at the same time, you know, we're not overdoing it on any other. I have other a question. Things. How would you, yes. if you have the fresh rosemary, how would you chop it? It's very coarse. It's very hard. Yeah, so at that point, you're probably not going to, um, if you have a very sharp, you know, sort of butcher knife, you can just chop it. Otherwise, my recommendation would be to take off because predominantly for me, I use the um, sprigs, but if you're boiling like some type of stew, you want that, you want that hard part in there. Um, it's just a really- of, It just gave a suggestion, which I was thinking of doing is when you bake bread to mm -hmm. have it chopped, it says chopped and, and uh, put it into the bread dough. Mm -hmm. and that would be delicious. But I'm saying to myself, if it's, if it's, the, if it's the plant itself, it's going to mm -hmm. be hard to chop it that fine. 
Well, I wouldn't necessarily use that bark piece, you know, the, the hard part. I would use the other parts because that bark is very hard. You're so I'm the stem? Yeah, the stem rather. No, you would normally you don't use that anyway. You pull right. you pull it off, pull downward and it all comes off. But even then it's very hard. You think these you're talking about the green parts? Yeah. I think okay. I mean, so, I, I never had it from a regular plant in my backyard. So oh. maybe, so I don't know. Okay. Maybe yeah, this, maybe this is like the spring, you know, like in, in springtime, this might mm -hmm. be, is it still the same like in the fall? Does it still okay. look like that or is it different? I, I have found, I used rosemary and I just take the leaves and just chop them up. Yeah. It's very fine. And then once they're done cooking, they soften. Exactly. I was just going to say you know, that. I would, it's not one of those herbs that I would put on last minute, like dill right. or basil <laughs> or anything. That right. is one of the ones that you can cook in, and, and it's soft enough. It's not a problem. Be, like, you, know, like gonna, everything, you don't use the stem. But is it going to yeah. soften in bread dough? I think so. It will. Yeah. And, yeah. If you cut it, and if you're chopping it up, you know, it's sort of like garlic. You're not going to throw in a whole clove of garlic. You're going to chop it up, and mm -hmm. then it all mixes in, so you have little pieces in there. You know, that's a great combo, too. You just gave me an idea. Into there the bread go. dough to put raw garlic chopped and as well as the rosemary that would be delicious there yeah you yeah mm. thank you <laughs> yeah definitely thank you barbara no sure. great tips but yeah i think you could do well once it's cooked is what i wanted to share once it's cooked i think okay. it's gonna be fine oh and uh, mary platt says she uses in her raisin bread recipe she uses mace oh there goes that mace i'm gonna have to go out and get myself some mace <laughs> <laughs> not the one you spray roberta <laughs> <laughs> That was just funny. <laughs> oh my God. That was a great joke though, I have to say. Um, but I love I love the 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 banter and the conversation we're having because it's it's better that way for me. I, I love I love when you talk back. You just so have to keep cool. an eye on the time because it's 10 of already. Oh wow. All right. So let's run through your presentation. Yeah. Um, so cumin has a warm, earthy flavor. Most popular spices used in the in Latin America. Uh, North Africa, Middle East, uh, in the Middle East, and in Indian cooking. Uh, it's also essential in spice blends such as curry powder and gram masala. So you'll find cumin added to those. Uh, it's ancient. So it's been around for a very long time, 4,000 years. And um, it actually even appeared in the Bible in the Old and the New Testament. I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to share that. Um, so for generations, people have used cumin to treat conditions ranging from uh, indigestion and diarrhea all the way to headaches. Uh, people in India have used it to treat even kidney and bladder stones uh, and even use it to take care of some eye, eye disease. Now it contains antioxidants uh, as well, which we know is really great for pretty much, um, you know, healing and repairing our cells. Cumin seeds uh, contain naturally occurring substances that work as antioxidants, as we basically stated before. And it even has anti-cancer properties, right? It may help with treating diarrhea, which was said before, and it helps to control blood sugar and fight uh, bacteria as well in the body because it has that anti-inflammatory effect, all right? It's been said that it also helps to lower cholesterol and it will aid in weight loss. And that's just because anything that helps our gut will help with weight loss, all right? So we're gonna run on here. In terms of the storage, um, this seed can be kept in the freezer over a long period of time to maintain the flavor. Uh, and especially if you're not using them regularly, okay? I use them regularly, so I have them in my cupboard. Otherwise, the, key, the seed can be stored in a pantry for three to four years. So that mace that you pulled out, Susan, <laughs> Certain spices can be stored for a long period of time. Now, cumin, we know right now because we're seeing this, but the others, we're not 100% sure, all right? So ground cumin should be stored in a cool, dark place and last up to six months. I have to tell you, it's more than three or four years. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what to say. Anyway. <laughs> I, pulled it, I pulled it forward so it won't be in the back anymore. <laughs> oh, my gosh. More than three to four years. All right, we're gonna we're gonna continue. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, though, Susan. <laughs> this is a no judgment zone. We are not judging you. All right. Thank um, you. Yeah. 
<laughs> because, you know, we're being so vulnerable. We're sharing our stories. So we can't judge anyone, right? Um, so in terms of the taste, cumin has a warm, earthy flavor and the aroma uh, is a bit of both sweet and bitter. Okay, and the whole seed needs to be toasted in order to reach the optimal flavor. So I'll just tell you really quickly, I use cumin a lot when I'm doing my curries. It's something I generally do not leave out. And I have the seeds and also the powder. And when you actually toast the seeds, the flavor really does open up. And especially within the house, you can just walk around and the smell is really great. So in terms of cooking, besides what I just shared, um, depending on whether the recipe calls for cumin seeds or ground cumin, you will use it differently in the recipe. So whole cumin seeds should be included early in the recipe, which I totally agree with this. So the spices have time to release its essence and then adding them to a hot broth or oil will allow the aroma or flavor to dispense into the dish. The actual powder, I would say you can toss that on towards the end of your cooking. So if you're making any type of um, like curry chickpea or anything like that and you're using it, you wanna put that closer towards the end. And it's the same with gram masala which we're not talking about today, but gram masala is one of those that you really do want to put on towards the end because if you cook it for too long, it tends to become bitter. All right, let's move on. So we're going to talk about thyme, my absolute favorite. Thyme also contains a variety of minerals and vitamins that promote good health. Thyme is full of vitamin C for the immune support, potassium for healthy cells, and manganese for bone development, and even for blood clotting, which is good if you need that. Um, one of the things I'll say about thyme is that um, if you have a bad cold or specifically a cough, boiling thyme in uh, hot water, just boiling it and drinking the water generally suppresses the cough. So it's a home remedy that I've used um, you know, for years. So if you want to try it, uh, that's a tip that you could take away today is just boiling the fresh thyme using some honey after um, because it's, it is quite potent. You can have it as a tea to help suppress coughing. Thyme is fragrant. It has a, it's a woody herb. As we said before, the, it, the dried leaves are best used when they can be rehydrated, uh, meaning cooking, boiling, right? Um, so using it in stews, sauces, dips, uh, they can be substituted for fresh thyme very seamlessly. I actually love fresh thyme. I very rarely use bottled thyme and I, I've bought one before and I use it up so fast because I love the fresh thyme so much. I, I use thyme when roasting chicken. Well, not me specifically, but <laughs> you can use it in roasting chicken, making gravies and for braising mushrooms. That's where I come in. When I'm using my mushrooms, I'll be using fresh thyme. Turmeric, one of our favorites. I think everybody here loves turmeric. Um, this is not the right photo. This is cumin. I was supposed to change the picture. Forgive me for that. <laughs> Turmeric is the spice that gives curry its yellow color. It is in the member of the ginger family. Um, and if you've ever seen it in a store and you look at the ginger and you look at the turmeric, the turmeric is usually just a little bit smaller and much more yellow, all right? Turmeric is slightly warm and it has a peppery flavor, works especially well with cauliflower, potatoes, and root vegetables. And I can tell you right now, it's excellent when you do with um, like a lentil stew. It's also very good um, in that way as well. Turmeric is as, um, as, I'm sorry, and especially its most active com compound, curcumin, has been scientifically proven uh, to have health benefits, uh, such as potential to improve your heart health, prevent and against Alzheimer's and cancer. Uh, it's very potent, anti-inflammatory and antioxidants. Uh, and it may also help to improve symptoms of depression and arthritis. Turmeric may be the most effective nutritional supplement in existence. All right. And I'm sorry, I don't have a photo there, um, but you know what it looks like. It's really, um, you know, orange in color. I would say, I wouldn't even call it yellow. It's more orange. It's easier than ever to find fresh turmeric root and dry turmeric powder in the health food stores. Uh, special, specialty spice shops, Asian groceries, and you can actually find it now in more supermarkets, I would say. We would talked you, about the health, sorry, question? Question. question. Yes. Would you, if you're using turmeric, would you reduce the amount of pepper that you're putting in the recipe? Pepper, why do you ask that? Well, I <laughs> thought that it has a peppery, it said someplace in here. Oh, it does, oh, okay. Pepper. Yeah, you could technically do that. I generally don't because I love pepper also. Okay. <laughs> so I, I would like probably do the same amount. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Listen, when you're vegan, you 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 just I put a lot of spice on my stuff. Sometimes I like it just plain, but there are other times where I do kind of flavor things up a bit. Um, but yeah, in terms of pepper, I you know I, I I personally wouldn't, but you can experiment with that. You could take down the pepper a bit and increase the turmeric. You know, especially because the health benefits are so great. Thank right. You. Well, Susan says here they should be used together. And actually, I was told that in order to get the uh, the nutrients from the turmeric, you need a little bit of the pepper. Mm hmm. Yeah. So using it together helps black pepper. Yeah. 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 yeah That's great. Thank you for pointing that out, um, Susan, and for sharing that with us, Barbara. I appreciate that. Yeah. You said specifically black pepper, white pepper wouldn't work. Oh, I just, I, I never use white pepper, <laughs> but white pepper probably is the same thing. Um, maybe it's not exactly the same, but I, I can't say that there's such a major difference, right? Well, it, of... I only, I know that, uh, for example, if I'm using white potatoes mm -hmm. and I want pepper, I would use the white pepper so that it's not visible. Oh, okay. So it's more about the color you think then for you or I mean, I think there's a difference then probably. Yeah. I think it's yeah. just, it's, it's the capsaicin in it. I, I agree. So, but the nutritional value is the same? There's I don't really think no nutritional value. It, it, it increases the nutritional value of the turmeric. The turmeric. But there's okay. no real nutritional value in the pepper itself. It's just okay. the Thank right. you. Thank you, Barbara. Great. Great question. Um, so I'm not going to go over all of these because we are a little bit pressed for time. So I'm just going to run on. Uh, I, once again, you can totally get these slides, uh, but you can see that it has quite a few uh, health benefits here. It's really something I generally uh, suggest incorporating in your food. Uh, I did some tofu last night on my salad and I threw it on there on the tofu and I didn't scramble. I just chopped up the tofu and just sprinkled it on with a few other um, spices and it was excellent. Uh, basil, we talked about this one also earlier. Someone I think said they really liked basil. Uh, so it's also called great basil and it's a tender plant. It's used in cuisines worldwide. So in the Western cuisine, the generic term basil refers to the variety also known as sweet basil or Genovese basil. Basil is native to tropical regions from Central Africa to Southeast Asia. The flavor profile is uh, regular basil has a sweet and savory taste profile with peppery and minty undertones. Some also say it has a hint of anise. There goes that anise we were talking about earlier. Additionally, basil has a clove-like and slightly sweet aroma. You may instantly think of pesto the moment you smell its leaves. And I think most of us love that. So um, cinnamon is our next one. We're not going to share too much else about the basil, but you can use it. And I think most of us are familiar with how to use it, but I'll just share, um, throwing it on, uh, at the end. So I generally don't cook basil. I usually have it raw nine times out of 10. So I don't know how you all feel about that, but I put it on like my veggie pizzas. I throw it on any type of pasta dish that I'm making. I literally would take a huge handful of basil and just throw it on top, like a lot. <laughs> um, and it's very delicious in those two ways or two of my favorite ways to use it. You can throw in a chat some of the ways you've used it, but we're gonna run on because we're a little bit over time. So in terms of health benefits of the cinnamon, I'm going directly to that. Um, it uh, fights bad breath. It's, um, it's great for, it's a diuretic, lowest cholesterol, which anything is good for the heart. Cinnamon is great for the heart. It's going to help with blood circulation. It's gonna help with cholesterol. It's gonna help with high blood pressure. And that's because um, it's something that's great for blood circulation. So we're just gonna say that up front. Um, and then let's see what else I have here on cinnamon. So cinnamon is a highly delicious spice and it's been prized uh, for its medicinal properties for thousands of years. As I said before, majority of these herbs and spices we talked about, um, they have that history behind them. Modern science has now confirmed that people have known that for ages that it's been used for medicinal purposes. So it's actually the dried bark of the Cylon tree and you can get it in dried curled, curls or grounded, which, which is what most of us prefer, right? So sweet, warm, and bitter, those are some of the, the flavors that you can say that can come from it. It's used around the world from, its, uh, from Latin America to India, to Europe, to Africa. And aside from traditional sweet applications, try adding cinnamon to braises, curries, 
and even enchiladas. And you all shared earlier a little bit about where you use cinnamon. Some of it was not in the traditional ways. Um, and I think we were able to get through all six. It didn't feel like we did, but we did. We got cinnamon. Yep, we did cover all of them um, today. So I'm at the end here. We were asking questions along the way, which was great. So I'm gonna stop sharing and just see if there are any more questions. We managed to get through that one. <laughs> I wasn't sure at one point. Any more questions about this or anything else? Um, and I know we're all on, some of us are on the plant-based journey. Um, I've been incorporating more plants. You can ask questions around that as well because that's what these sessions are for as well. Does ground cinnamon have the same effect as the stick? Great question. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I always think things in its most natural form, the stick would probably have a little bit more benefit. But, you know, I like to research things to be 100% sure. <laughs> but off the top of my head, I would definitely say the stick is probably going to have a little bit more benefit. Well, aren't there spices that you would not get the benefit unless they're ground up? Such I as? Think, I'm trying to remember. I have a flax friend. is supposed to be better if it's ground. Which one? I, flax. Flax. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's oh, yes. Yes. I like so I'm that. saying you really have to know. You have to have that knowledge to know which mm -hmm. way. To go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to look that up. I'm looking now, but I don't see anything quickly that I could say that it is. I never um, use flaxseed. Does anybody use flaxseed? And if so, how? I do. I, I also sprink. I sprink everything on my salad <laughs> or yogurt. I sprinkle it, sprinkle it, and I don't grind it, and I should. It's just yeah. too much trouble. I don't have a handy mortar and pestle anymore. I used to. I don't know where it went. Probably well, in the back I, of that closet. You need to get back there and find it. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you this, and I mean, it does cost a little bit more, but I purchased the already grounded one from Whole Foods. And that's how I use it. So I used to get this, the flax, the flax seeds not grounded, but I just get it grounded. I pay an extra dollar, I think, for the grounded one. And stay what do you use it on? How do you use it? I use it in my smoothies. That's the main. I take one spoon daily along with chia seeds, also chia grounded. Seeds. The okay. chia seeds you have to be careful with because those things swell. So ever since that, I've just been putting that in my smoothie. So I'll use like a half of... Um, teaspoon of chia seeds grounded and one tablespoon of flax seed in my smoothie and I just mix that all together you could blend it too but I put it at the end once I blend my smoothie I put it at the end and also on salads um like Susan is doing that's how I usually use it those two ways um yeah I can't think of anything I think else. I do that because because it resembles sesame seed and if I don't happen to have sesame seed so I sprinkle you know so it's a pale seed nice. yeah no that's nice I love that. I think the other, the other, uh, the other way that I use my flaxseed is because I'm plant based. I use it to make my um, desserts. So I make like it's like it helps to make the egg. So I don't use egg, right? So I'm just using that with water, and I let it sit for five minutes, and then once you use that, it brings everything together. Like I make these oatmeal cookies, and that's what I use my flaxseed to get my sort of egg consistency, so to speak. Oh. Uh yeah, so it's a great one. It's a great, great. It's one of the best ways that I use my flaxseed, actually. <laughs> but I don't bake as often like Barbara. I should. <laughs> Any more questions, comments, or anything? This was such a lovely session. You, I felt like I was hanging out with a bunch of my girlfriends, just <laughs> chatting. <laughs> oh, it doesn't feel like work at all. <laughs> I have a quick question just to make sure you guys are okay. I recorded this assuming that Deborah was going to do her spiel first and then the question and answers. Would you be okay with me sharing if your face ends up on, say, our YouTube or something? <laughs> no problem. I just want to make sure you guys are okay with it. Roberta? Fine. Okay. You're going to be famous, everybody. Yes, yeah, well, yes well, because that's where it, everybody goes first, the, the wellness corner. YouTube. <laughs> when it comes to, um, <laughs> when, you put up, when, when you start recording, a thing comes up, a, a sign saying, you know, and you have to click got it so that it can yes. continue. 
isn't that in a sense giving permission for you to appear? Well, that is. That's giving per- recording, but it's not necessarily giving permission to go public. You know, I got to, it. Okay, publicly. Well. <laughs> so that's why I'm just double checking to make sure you're good. I mean, there's nothing. Oh, I don't. I'm not going to answer for it. But we. Listen, you were, yes, let your hair down. Put on makeup. (laughs) The world is going to know about your spice. uh, Oh my God. I don't know. We're going to lose you. I don't know. (laughs) I'm just so thrilled that we are together again. I was away a lot in, in July 